Welcome to Anything Cricket. Let's talk. The West Indies team is currently on tour in Holland, and after the Holland leg, they're due to visit Pakistan. Since arriving in Holland, a number of the players and officials have been able to interact with the media. Here's coach Phil Simmons. Coach, apart from looking to win the series against the Netherlands, what are some of the things that you would like to see to describe the tour as a success? Hi, everyone. Um, I think, to me, the most important thing is, is how we play the cricket, as in we have, we have had um, occasions in the past where we've put ourselves in a good position at the start and the batsmen just let it slip away. Um, we've had other positions where we didn't start well and the batsman picked us up, but still let it slip away before the 40th over. So I think my idea of success on this tour is how we play between overs 11 and 40 and, 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 and how we accumulate the runs, how we score our boundaries, everything that goes together to putting on big scores will happen between 11 and 40. So... In the, on this tour, that's that's the that's the, going to be the highlight for me. Um, in terms yeah, of the conditions, you know, it's an uncharted territory, so to speak. Um, you may have a bit more familiarity than most, if not all, of the players. Um, what are you expecting there, and I guess what information can you relate to them in terms of uh, the conditions that might present? Um, we went and had a look at the ground today and, and, and the wicket, and it seems to be uh, as good as you can get in, in at this time of the year in, in Holland or Ireland or England. So the wicket looks good. Um, they were in the middle of preparation. Um, so the wicket looks good. It, it is, we're in Holland, so it's going to seem a little bit. Um, it's going to be not as quick as some of the wickets in the Caribbean, but you have to adjust. So hopefully in the in the four days of practice, the nets will be similar to the middle. So that's how we've got to assess it. Coach, I just want to kind of ask, um, I mean, a tour of this nature, some of us still questioning the, 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 the legitimacy of this tour. Why are we really going to the Netherlands in the first place? But at the end of the day, Coach, how do you take a tour like this seriously? Um, the first thing you you have to realize is that it's cricket. It's 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 people who've been playing cricket for a long time now. They qualified for World Cups, and the other part about it is that it's for points that will lead to us qualifying for for, for the next World Cup. So it, it doesn't matter who you have to play against. The the ten or the thirty points are are, are the important things, and. To do that and to win those points, you have to play cricket properly. So you have to prepare properly. Right. And, and how has the team adjusted since being down there, since it's the first time we're kind of going down that side of the world? Well, we don't know yet because we only came in um, yesterday. We had uh, um, all the little um, things you do in preparation at the hotel today. And tomorrow morning is our first practice. So... We will, we will know over the next three or four days before the first game how we are just in um, by the way we practice. Is this a situation where you're looking at some players or you want to feel your strongest team just to ensure that, make sure that you win these games? No, we have to play our strongest team. We have to continue to play our strongest team. One, to win the games, um, but also to, to, to get that, that, knit, that knit going. Um, new captain... Um, he's got to get the the, the 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 thing of this team together so that everything flows. Um, we have three, which everyone would agree, more difficult games after here. But 
right now is where we start building this 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 squad here. Vice captain of the one international side, Sheho, had his media engagement as well. Just want to start with the preparations you guys have been having since reaching up there. How has that gone so far for you guys? Uh, it's been going pretty good so far, I would say. The biggest thing was trying to get climatized with the with the weather. It's a bit chilly here now, uh, but the first two sessions have been very good. In terms of the opposition, um, what do you guys know of them, and and what can we expect the approach of the Westerns to be in the games coming up? Uh, well, as we all know, we haven't played many cricket well many cricket games against them, so. It's going to be fairly new to most of us. Um, we kind of have to play it by ear in that sense because we haven't physically played against them too often. Uh, but we're just going to use the technology that we have now, looking at footage, trying to see what's the best plans to formulate against them. So it's about trying to, to take those boxes as early as we can and use the conditions to our advantage. And hopefully we can get on top of them sooner rather than later. I just want to ask about um, the approach in terms of batting for you guys. Uh, with Pollard now not in the team, Puran uh, under new leadership with Puran as a skipper, can we expect um, the Westerns to go in with the aggressive approach as before with the power hitters or would it be a mix of, of, of the two? I'm a strong believer in playing the situation. So I wouldn't say that we have to play one particular way um, in, in any particular inning. So. Um, it's about assessing the conditions quickly, seeing what the opposition are throwing at you, first of all, and then finding the best way to score runs, because we all know whoever scores the most runs in the cricket game wins. So it's about trying to find the best plan and what will work on that particular day, because every day something can be different. You, the, the conditions can be different. So it's just about adapting quickly and finding the best way to go about scoring runs. Um, I'll start with the negative, um, Mr. Hope. Um, I know much has been made about your form in one day cricket, especially over the past couple of years. But I know uh, a few weeks, a couple of weeks ago, you made a century in the four-day championship. Will that serve as a, a morale booster for you heading into this series against Netherlands, even though it's a different format of cricket? I don't see really negative is in that, but... Um, no, only negative in terms uh, of your form. Of, of, my of form? Yeah. My form was bad? I didn't know that, well, but thank you. Compared to how it was 2019-2020. In one in one day cricket, that is okay. Whatever you guys think, but um, obviously scoring runs in any cricket, whether it's a club game, international game, that's the thing. As a batsman, you always want to score runs and do well. So it's nice to get some scores under your belt. I'm sure that goes for all the the rest of the batsmen batsmen in the team. So yeah, like I say, I don't know with the bad form we're talking about, but I also don't really believe in form. So just about having that confidence going into the game, whether you score five hundreds in a row or five ducks in a row. It's just about having that mindset, clear mindset, to go out there and try to perform the next time you get a chance to bat. All right, I have another question for you. Um, Tina is only two reporters, two yeah. reporters. So I have another question. Um, you are the deputy to Nicholas Puran. Have you all and discussions in terms of how the leadership will be shared in terms of who will be passing on ideas, who may be helping all the batsmen, who may be helping all the bowlers, or you might just chip into Puran and he will make the final decisions on the field. How will your leadership, this leadership style grow, be like? Uh, it's, I guess we have to, to see how it work over a period of time. But the way how it works here, we, we tend to share ideas, whether it's from the guy who's now coming to the team or someone who has 200 games under their belt. So we don't just specify, okay, this person can only share or this next person can only share. We think that if you have any ideas that can help the team, that we should always share them with our peers. So it's just about finding that balance with not sharing too much information and confusing the skipper. But we always had that communication going from the time we now started playing together. So I, wouldn't, I don't see the big issue when it comes to that. But the game is just 
to find the best formula to get the best guy coming to the team or as an experienced guy who's been playing for a while. So just about trying to find the best way to help the team in the long run. And also one more question for me in, in, in this batch of questions here. Um, who will be doing the duties behind this term? Have that been decided yet or that will be a game, de- a game de- decision? Uh, we, we haven't decided that one yet, but more likely I, I would take the gloves. Um, it seems to me that the issue, as, as, as she pointed out, the team, we don't sort of identify a kind of hierarchy. Also, so, so you, you have more right as it were, to answer to answer the question or to um, to make suggestions. It seems to me that that depends on on a kind of team culture, what I would call a team culture. And um, the, the coach has for a long time been talking about a kind of let me use his words, the need for this team to gel. Remember him saying that before the World Cup and he said it many times since. So I'd like what my question would be, do you think that this team as a team is the kind of the kind of unit where what you were just talking about, Jay, where people will volunteer the information, even if they're new to the team, even if they have been there for two weeks or two years, do you think this team has reached a stage where it works like that? I wouldn't say that. Sorry. Sorry, I wouldn't boy. say that we have reached that stage as yet, but I am hundred percent, hundred and ten percent sure that we're on that path. So, at the end of the day, we are all going on the team, on the field as a team, and we're all going on the field together, and we're trying to get the same result. So, regardless if someone doesn't necessarily agree with a particular plan, we're talking about an individual. As long as it's a team plan that we're going with, we all have to buy into it at the end of the day. It's, it's a team. It's sport. We're all not going to be in agreement with every single thing. But as long as we build that culture to know, okay, we got this one goal we're trying to achieve, then over a period of time, we're going to get there. And it will hopefully filter down into the original stuff from the um, original teams so that when we get to to the international stage for West Indies, then it becomes like second nature. So it's just about understanding what is the best way to get everyone to buy into that culture so that when we get on the field, we're on the same page and we're trying to achieve that one goal. For, for quite some time now, Nicholas has been preaching that we, that's spelled W-I, are a six-hitting team. Okay, he's been saying that for a long time publicly. I want to know whether that is still the view of the current leadership of, of, of the team and the, the management and whether that is the view that you, she, share. Well, first of all, I think that that will more come into play when we're talking about T20 cricket and the personnel that we had for those T20 games. Now, we still have to look at who you have in the squad and what their strengths are. So you need to find a way to buy into the player's strength and formulate plans to fit into the team's plans. Now, I wouldn't say we have as many six hitters in this team. We do have powerful players, in, especially in the back end of the innings. But it's about trying to get the best out of that batsman to score the same runs. Because you can hit a six and you have five dot balls and you can run six singles in the over the same six runs. So just about trying to find a way to score those runs to, to give the team the best chance of defending or chasing a score. That's very interesting. Um, one, last, one last question that, that comes out of that. Do you think that the individuals in the team have uh, a commitment, let me put it that way, have a commitment to, to do what you just said, to follow the team plan, to play, and I think the coaches, the coaches, um, quotation is, is appropriate here, to play according to the team plan, according, to play the situation, I think is, the, is the, the, the phrase he used. Do you think that as a general rule, uh, the current team has players who are prepared to, to play the situation and not to deal with whatever the mantra might be, whether or not we are a six-hitting team? What is your view? Definitely. As I said, it's something that can't be 
fix or change overnight. It's something that we have to stick to a particular process to see it uh, come good. So I do believe that we have the personnel to, to get the job done. And everyone is obviously willing to, to change or adapt to different situations if the team occurs. So I, I have no doubt that we're going to get there eventually, sooner rather than later as well. Mr. Hope, concerning the issue, not the issue, concerning the retirement of Kevin Pollard, it shocked a lot of people in the Caribbean. Um, yes, he had his critics, but the, the timing was a bit surprising. Were you, how you, how you, were you at all surprised when you found out that he was retiring, how he had retired from international cricket? Yeah, I was a bit surprised. But again, I, I, I don't know what's going on in someone's mind and... You also can't tell someone what decision that they can make or have to make. So, yeah, I, I just wish him all the best, but I was very surprised when I, when I heard the news. All right, and last question. As one of the leaders in the team, there are some young players, young in terms of age and in terms of experience in this team. Mm -hmm. I will call three names, um, Jaden Seals, Sherman Lewis, and Casey Carty. Um, how mm -hmm. have they... Been, how have they integrated into this ODI team set up thus far? Yeah, yeah. So, but you can talk. The couple of games that we've had, the, the couple of days that we've had at uh, training, uh, it seems as though they've been here for a while. You know, obviously, Jaden, Jaden has been playing tests for a few games now. He's been far behind. It's just about getting that, that foot in, feeling that first game, getting the nerves out. But they, we, we all have a connection from first class cricket. We know each other from on the 19 cricket, um, youth cricket. So it's like we're just playing with each other again, just at a different level. But they've fit in pretty well so far. Just about trying to give them the confidence as a team and make them feel at home. Quite recently, Nico Rifa, a young Barbadian playing cricket in England, made his first class debut for Surrey. I had a chat with him. Uh, congratulations, uh, Nico, on making your first class debut. Thanks. Yes, so um, tell us about the experience. Um, yeah, it was a good experience to play my very first first class game. Uh, although it wasn't against another company side, it was still a good experience to be out there in a first class game because I've actually fielded, I've actually done a lot of fielding overs as a 12th man for the first team during first class game. So it was actually quite nice to be able to be a part and um, back in the game for the first time. Uh, how did you do? Um, I think I did quite well. Got 68. Unfortunately, didn't go on to score 100, but pretty content with 68 as a first knock. Mm -hmm. All right. And you felt quite comfortable in the field because you said you've done that before. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, I've done a lot of overs. I reckon I've done more overs with the first team that actually a first class cricket than probably second team cricket. You mean in terms of fielding? Yeah, in terms of fielding, yeah. So how did the guys embrace you for your first game? You're the rookie. <laughs> actually, it was quite a young team, but there were still a couple senior players around. And yeah, everyone just embraced each other because there were three debuts, three first class debuts, including myself. So everyone just got around us and made it and this even more enjoyable. Yeah, Sri Lanka, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you obviously been working towards this goal for, for some time now. So share with us the events that put you on the path with having started your cricket journey in, in Barbados, of course, and, and your academic education as well in Barbados. So tell us how you got on this path with. Um, obviously, I come from a, a quite big cricketing family in Barbados. So that kind of jump started the cricket for me. Growing up, playing a lot of cricket. Um, 
at my secondary school, Queens College. It started at also at Wanderers as my club team. Then when I was about 14 years old, I got offered this cricket scholarship to England. So I accepted that. And then from 14 till I was 18, I was going to school in England and playing cricket during the summer, which was pretty good. But also during the summer, I would come back and play for the Barbados youth teams as well. And then at the end of my last summer at school, some Surrey, I was playing for Surrey. I was in the Surrey Academy, actually, for a couple of years, for my last two years at school. And then at the back end of the summer, when I finally left school, they asked me if I wanted to sign for them or if I had plans on going home. So I just decided to sign for them and have been training with them ever since 2019 till now. So it was good to finally put all the work into practice in a first-class game. Mm -hmm. So what were some of the major challenges, if any, uh, in fitting into the cricket culture of England and, and how did you overcome that? Um, obviously, the biggest thing for me was, because obviously in Barbados, you were able to play outside all the time. But then in England, you know, you have to wait to the summer to play games and stuff. So quite a lot of indoor training took quite, it, it took a while to get used to, I would say. And then to transition from indoor training to back to outdoors, that took a while for me as well. But I would say after the first couple of years of doing it, it kind of, it kind of adjusted a bit quicker each year. So yeah, I would say that's the biggest challenge. What about relationships in terms of you know interacting with players who are of a different background to you, so to speak? Yeah, because obviously people my age in England were raised a bit different. They did things different to how they would in Barbados, which was a nice experience. Could learn, pick up a couple of things, one or two things that they did differently. And that helped to shape my game as well. And also coming into contact with quite a few big names out there. Because I remember my first, one of my first second team games was with um, Morning Markle. Me and him batted together in the T20. I remember that experience. That was one of my first second team games for Surrey. So that just shows that how different experiences could teach you different things. Well, he may not have been a better batsman than you, but he's certainly a lot taller. Was that intimidating? <laughs> yeah, it was a bit weird because like, someone took a picture of us and to see someone that was taller than me and I was batting with them, that was the first for me. Especially since you're no shorty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so you, you mentioned the differences in, 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 in uh, let's say, the, the climate and how that impacted you and, and relationships. But what about differences in, in coaching styles and, and, and the various things that you do in preparation? What's that like? How, how is it different? Um, I would say the coaching style is quite different. I would say in England, the coaches kind of let you take care of your own game. Like, let's say what you want to work on, how long you would like to bat for, how many balls you like to bowl, or how you would like to shape your game going forward. Well, in Barbados, is a bit stricter. Like, they will tell you you have to do this or do that a specific way. Well, in England, it's a bit, it's a bit more flexible, I would say. Doesn't that flexibility lend itself maybe to lack of discipline or maybe people not being focused? Um, it depends at times. So I think some coaches in England get it done quite well, where they're able to manage that discipline to also to make sure that you're working hard at your game as well as shaping it the way you want to. What is they, it's kind of the player's responsibility to know what they want to get out of certain situations and stuff, which I guess helps you to mature fast as a person instead of have to, having to rely on one coach to tell you exactly what to do all the time. So you're primarily a batsman, but you do do a bit of bowling, huh? Um, <laughs> I haven't know. bowled in quite a while, but yeah, I still say I'm a batting all rounder. Okay, good. So I, that's exactly where you want to go because you're primarily a batsman and you hardly bowl now. What if you decided then that you want to take your bowling more seriously? Um, would you be likely then to get the support of the coach in, in doing that or would they probably try to, to, to change your mind and keep you as a batsman? 
No, um, yeah, they always encourage me to bowl. Actually, during the winter, I was working on my bowling quite a lot. Actually, t- today, in the last day of the um, first class game, I was asked to bowl because it was coming down to dead rubber, but I objected to it. They, yeah, they keep pushing my bowling because I just, they keep telling me, <laughs> they keep telling me that. Sorry? No, go ahead. I, I was interrupting you, but then they said, go ahead. They keep telling you. <laughs> yeah, they keep telling me to push it because it has an extra strain to the bow and I could get into teams if I can bowl a couple overs. I remember even Hashim Amla was telling me that in the net said, if I don't, if I find him bowling the same is a bit difficult, like a state that I could turn to off spin, but just look to bring something different to the team. And that's how it helped me get into different teams. I just, so I wouldn't have to rely so heavily on how many runs I score or whatever. I could also chip in with a couple of overs. So you bowled medium pace, eh? Yeah, medium pace, yeah. Right. And why why do you turn on the opportunity to bowl in the first class game? <laughs> um, because the situation was that the two captains were gonna shake hands, but one of the batters, which was the captain, wanted to get his hundred first. Okay, so you did the yeah. victim of circumstances. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, okay. Fair enough. Probably a wise choice. So tell me something. You mentioned um about you know a family of cricketers. Um, does that legacy, the reefer legacy, if you want to call it that, put pressure on you to succeed? Um Mm, not quite, but I remember when I was younger, growing up in under thirteens, playing for Wonders or playing for my school. Every time I hand the hat, the umpire, I mean, hand my hat to the umpire. The umpire asked me, "Oh, you're from the Rifa family? Oh, you, that means that you could bat and all of that." But I would say, every more recently, now I don't really feel that pressure as much. But probably growing up, I would say there was a lot more pressure. Well, this is a different phase now in your journey. Um, what are your medium to long term goals? Then? Um, just play, just try to play as much first in cricket as I can, and hopefully string together some performances in the first team, playing first class cricket list there, or whatever it may be, and then probably hopefully go on to play international cricket if all goes well. I no doubt who that will be. Who you be looking to play for? I guess. <laughs> I'm still not still undecided. Okay, so it's still it's still something that is that can go either way. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. All right. Now tell us um who have been some of the major influences on your progress so far? Um obviously my father, he's always pushing me to do my best to train hard and not get distracted by the other um by the distractions that are out there um i would say people like kurt edwards chris jordan i have yeah recently they have been big mentors to me i would say over the past year or two years especially now that cj is back at surrey with me as well so i'll say those are major two also that's a topping growing up working with coach Dex, he was coaching me from the age of nine straight up all through the ranks so it, he had a very he had a major impact on my game as well um so just to revisit the question i asked you before then what would it take since you've got this close association with coach dex and appreciation for what he's done what would it take um to get you to to make that decision to to play for west cities <laughs> uh, <laughs> um coach dex is always telling me that it doesn't matter he'll always be pro and to do whatever is best for me so no pressure on his side okay so when that time comes then you make a decision based on circumstances yeah that's correct yeah okay well what advice would you give to to young cricketers looking to establish a professional career um i would say try to enjoy cricket as much as possible from a young age still try to work as hard as possible and know that the game that cricket is a game that could be yeah you could go through ups and downs and you could be at a dark point at some point in time but just keep working hard and hopefully just keep trusting the process and hopefully it works out 
Nico Rufa, thanks for chatting with us. And you certainly offer you congratulations once again and wish you a very bright future um, wherever you play. <laughs> thanks. Well, here is wishing young Nico all the best in his first class career. That's our show. Thanks for watching. Join us again soon for another episode of Anything Cricket. Let's talk.